Welcome to Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Trusiak and we have a wonderful show for you using all of my favorite spring ingredients. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a seared hanging tender sandwich with a little arugula, a little ramp aioli, and on the side of that we're going to have a heirloom tomato and goat cheese balsamic marinated uh, salad. Now let's start off with that salad. That salad will take the longest because we do want to let that those tomatoes marinate in that balsamic vinaigrette. I'm just going to use three different types of tomatoes here. These are all heirloom tomatoes, so they're different than your Romas, they're different than your standard beefsteak tomatoes. They have a lot of flavor in them, and they also bring a great deal of color to your plate after you're done making this salad. Um, I'm just going to rough chop these. I already washed them and everything. And let me just show you how beautiful they all look inside. I'm going to cut them into uh, probably eighths. So they all have different colors, different shades of green, different shades of orange and, and red in there. Alright, so when cutting the tomatoes, and, and a word about these heirloom tomatoes, they have funny names. Some of them are called yellow taxis, green zebras. When you go to the farmer's market, you meet the farmers, you're going to get to know all these different types of tomatoes. Just know they're like eating apples. You can just take a bite right out of them and they're going to taste delicious. But what I did was I cut them into little wedges, and I'm going to show you the easiest way to do that. Um, I'm going to take the top of the tomatoes off, so I'm going to actually kind of use a, a triangle type method. I'm going to take my knife, cut the core out so I can remove that core in all one piece. And then I'm just going to roughly cut this into, you know, maybe five, six, seven different nice little wedges here. And I'll do that with the green one as well. But that's how I do my, uh, my tomato wedges for this salad. The next thing for this salad is going to be our balsamic vinaigrette. And really, the only thing I do for this is I get balsamic vinegar, roughly about a eighth of a cup, so about one ounce. I'm going to do one ounce of olive oil. And this one doesn't have to be extra virgin olive oil, but a good quality is uh, is definitely goes a long way with this salad because you'll be able to taste that olive oil. But so if you have the extra virgin olive oil, use it on this. I'm gonna do two pinches of salt, a little bit of cracked pepper, and then after the pepper, just put a nice lid on this. You can use a plastic wrap, but I like to find a Tupperware that I can actually have the, uh, the top on too, nice and tight. And I'm going to give this a good shake. Take the top back off. Add my goat cheese. This is about a half a cup of goat cheese to three tomatoes. Give this a good shake. And now this is going to go in the refrigerator. We'll let that sit up now for about a half an hour or whatever we get done with this recipe. Now the next thing we're going to go on to is our uh, ramp and spring garlic aioli. Now what is an aioli? An aioli is a raw egg non-cooked hollandaise sauce and then what a hollandaise sauce is basically uh, clarified butter, uh, eggs and you cook it over very low heat it stabilizes and it thickens up. We're going to use raw egg yolks uh, with instead of clarified butter, we're going to use olive oil. You can use canola, canola oil as well, but because this is not cooked, let's really use a good olive oil for this so that it imparts a lot of flavor into that uh, sauce. And this will turn into what is commonly known as mayonnaise uh, after a while. The difference between aioli and mayonnaise is that it's going to have garlic. It's going to have other flavors in there. We're going to use spring, uh, spring garlic, which is these giant... Uh, bulbs here, and then we're going to be using these ramps as well. Now, ramps are wild leeks. Spring garlic is obviously garlic before it matures. It shoots its stalk out, and then that stalk, which eventually gets uh, cut down, then all the energy goes back into this bulb, and then we get what we're very familiar with is just regular garlic. So this is the early stage of garlic before anything really happens, or before that stalk shoots up farmer then takes it from there and turns it into what we love. So this is available um, early on in the farmer's market season or if you have a, 
an all-natural grocery store or something like that near you, you should be able to find this right through that April, May, June time period. And then where these go into is what are called garlic scapes. You gotta check those out too. And when, when I find them, I'll definitely do another episode on those. Uh, they can they can hold their own episode all in, in general. Um, let's start with chopping up these ramps. Um, the other difference is you'll notice the ramps will also have these big green leaves, but I really wanted to focus on the color of the stalks. Ramps will be a, uh, a red or a purple violet color, and then your spring garlic is going to be that green. I'm going to use everything but the leaves on the ramps for this recipe, so I'm going to kind of pull those up a little bit. Set those aside. And when making an aioli, one of the things you want to remember is there is, just like a mayonnaise or just like any sort of salad dressing, there's going to be that balance between acid and fat. And again, the acid we'll be using, and this one is going to be uh, lemon, and the fat we're going to be using is going to be the olive oil. Now I'm just going to thinly slice these. They don't have to be, you know, an exact size cut or anything like that. But you just want to get them small enough so that your blender, which you're going to make this aioli in, you're helping it out a little bit. We're going to do the same thing for the spring garlic. So I have about four ramps here. I'm going to use the green part of the stalk part of that spring garlic because there's still a lot of flavor up there. And if you can compare garlic to spring garlic, think of spring garlic as more of that mellow, sweet onion flavor where garlic, we all know that flavor, very strong, very upfront, even to the sense of being slightly bitter. We're going to take these and go ahead and put those in our, uh, our blender here. And then we're going to follow that up with our onion, oh I'm sorry, we're going to follow that up with our lemons. And I'm going to use one whole lemon to juice, uh, one whole uh, lemon juice in this. And sure, you can do this by hand. It's much easier to use a blender or even a stand mixer. And because you can kind of control how you want this flavor to taste, we're either going to do a uh, two to one ratio of oil or if you want a very tart mayonnaise you could do one to one but I'm gonna probably do two to one so um, knowing that there's about two ounces of uh, lemon juice in here I'm probably gonna do about four ounces of of uh, oil in here now what holds those two things together sure the spring garlic does and also the ramps but it's the egg yolks that really hold it together and I'm gonna separate these eggs and then drop those egg yolks. And you can be as, you know, you, you can be as, have as much finesse with this as you want. Just try and get as much egg yolk in here. It's okay if you have a little bit of egg white in here, but just don't, you don't want a lot. Now I'm going to stop here with this, uh, the raw eggs in here and I know there's a lot of concern out there about the salmonella and everything just know that the salmonella is actually on the outside of the eggs and not on the inside the inside is just like your almost like a perfect world in there and as soon as we break it if any of that gets on the outside and the eggs weren't treated properly well then sure there's a potential that's why we're gonna make this one get it into the refrigerator and also keep in the back of your mind they also make pasteurized eggs so there's really nothing to worry about after that so making your own mayonnaise, making your own aioli is fine now. So to recap, what I have in here is I got my uh, ramps, my spring garlic, my lemon juice, my two egg yolks. I'm going to turn this on low speed. I'm going to move it up a little bit to uh, almost to a medium low. And now I'm going to pour in my olive oil, and I'm going to do this in slow stages. I don't want to just dump a whole four ounces of olive oil in there. I want it to slowly build up in there. So I'm using a four spout, and you can see how slow this is happening. You can also check out the coloring of that. 
starting to look like mayonnaise, right? And we're going to let this go for a little while. We're going to see what the consistency is. We don't want to add too much and water it down, but we don't want it to be too thick. And if it is too thick, I can show you how to fix that in a second. All right, so you've been running at a low to almost a low medium speed now. Now's the time it started to thicken up. Now I want you to increase that speed all the way to high. Let it run for about 45 seconds to a minute. Before you do that, we're going to throw a pinch of parsley in here, chopped parsley, a little bit of salt, probably about half of a teaspoon, and let's let it rip. Okay, now, a word about aioli. If you add too much salt too early in the process, it can break. So do it right before you're going to kick that up to full blast or high speed or whatever you got in your blender. Now your aioli is going to be fairly thick. It's going to look like, like mayonnaise, which you want. If for some reason it is too thick, this is where I want you to do one of two things. One, you could cut another lemon, put a couple drops in there. You could also take about one tablespoon of water Put that in there, run it on low, and it'll thin it out for you. Also, why doesn't this look like mayo or uh, Miracle Whip? Well, Miracle Whip and uh, mayonnaise has water in it, and that water will actually change this to a white color versus this beautiful yellow color. It tastes great. It's got a great consistency. Again, I didn't use pasteurized eggs. I'm going to go ahead and put this in the refrigerator until my recipe is ready. Now onto the steak. This is that wonderful piece of meat that I was talking about earlier. This guy here is your hanging tender or your hanger steak. It can be purchased at any fine butcher shop. You just got to ask the butcher, give him enough notice and say, hey, I want the hanging tender, I want the hanger steak, whatever they call it there. Normally the butcher will keep it for themselves, so it might even call it the butcher steak because they know and they appreciate how great this meat is. Now, why, does it, what is, why is it so sought after? It's so sought after because of where it's located on the animal, which is on the diaphragm of the animal, which puts it very close to the flank steak, which gives it a very rich iron flavor, which most beef lovers crave. Yet, if cooked properly, it can be as tender as that filet that you love at your restaurant, favorite restaurants. So let's go about cooking this, and let's go about actually preparing it first. As you see, there is a very thick cut of fat that runs right through it. We can't cook this out. This is not like your ribeye where it has that little kernel of fat. This will stay in there. So we actually want to remove it. And when you buy that hanging tender, you may actually buy it without it and your hanging tender may look a little different than what I'm showing you here. What you're going to do is you're going to take the tip of your knife, you're going to just run it down one side of that fat there and until you get to the other side you'll just see and I'm just going to make long strokes into the meat making sure that I get all the way down and what typically you'll buy at the you know from your butcher is you'll get a piece of meat that will be in the shape of a Y and I'll show you what I'm talking about here when I carve this out you can probably start to see it because now I'm running my knife down the other side of that thick piece of fat in there. You can start to see that Y that I was talking about. So the butcher will remove this. Okay, so all you're left with is this Y shaped. And if you get that, that's great. They've taken out and they've done most of the work for you. I'm going to go ahead and cut that whole thing out. Turn this over. And you're going to be left with basically two long, very thin um, ropes. Now these two pieces of meat here are now going to be perfect to either sear, grill, don't spend a lot of time on the heat with it, make sure you cook it to medium rare or rare, and you're good to go. You don't even need to season this that much. I just throw salt and pepper on mine, 
You might want to get a little fancy, throw a little crushed garlic on it, maybe some parsley on it. But I'm just going to put salt and pepper on this, and then we're going to take it to the pan. All right, I'm finishing up the salt and pepper on both sides. And because of that rich iron flavor, don't, don't be shy with the pepper. That pepper really, that flavor really comes out, marries well with that iron flavor, and it creates just a delicious steak. Now, the other thing is, I have a lot of fat running through it, and I have a little, little bit of fat still on it. That's fine. Uh, what you want to still remember from the past episodes, I always say cut across the grain. Your grain runs in a direction almost, uh, as we're looking at the, the, the pieces lengthwise, you're, you're, they run at an angle. So I'm going to have to take and cut the meat this way. And you can see that grain, you see how it's separating in there and there and there. So my grain is running in this direction, which means I have to slice the hanging tenders in this direction. So that's what we're using as our grain markers. And just remember, cut it that way, and we'll do it on both sides. It'll come out wonderfully. Now, I have my pan heating up. Again, it's a, just nothing in the pan right now. Getting it on high heat. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with a little bit of oil. For doing it this at home, I probably have my hood going as well just to keep the smoke out. I'm going to go ahead and put my hanging tenders in that oil. You'll immediately see them kind of shrink up a little bit. That's just the natural protein strands wanting to come together. And I'm going to leave them there on that side for about three minutes. I will peek at that three minute mark just to make sure that it's nice and caramelized. And then I'll go ahead and roll it on the next side and I'll just kind of keep rolling them in the pan, keep rolling them in the pan until all four sides are nice and caramelized. All right, so our steak, I'm, I'm starting to roll it. Got a hanging tender, you get that nice caramelization on it. And we're gonna let it sear up on the next side as well. All right, one last turn. And our steak's looking great. While that's finishing up in the pan, we wanna to start toasting our bread off under the broiler. I'm going to go with, this is just ciabatta bread, so it's a hard, crusty bread. Coat it in a little bit of oil. I've already pre-sliced it. Lay it open in, on the broiler pan. And hit it with a little salt and pepper. And then under the broiler, this is going to go. We're on our third side um, of the beef, so let me show you about what we're going to put on that sandwich as well. Now it's already starting to sound great. The hanger steak, the aioli, you got that great tomato salad on the side. We're going to put some arugula on it, but also we're going to put some deep fried uh, caramelized Vidali onion. Something else that's in season right now. Um, if you're watching this and it's, they're not in season, there's always some type of uh, onion, sweet onion that's available for you. Uh, Walla Wallas, the Maui Sweets. I'm going to drop the onions in the, the egg wash, which is just one egg, wa egg and uh, about one to one ratio of egg to water. I'm going to drop it into the breadcrumbs here, and then we're going to take these. Onion rings, get them nice and coated. And I'm going to sprinkle a little parsley in there too to give it a little bit of color. I'm not going to hit it with salt right now. I'll hit it with salt when it comes out of the oil. I'm going to drop it in my oil back here. And these are going to give it, give that sandwich a great crispy, crunchy texture in there, plus that little sweetness from the onions that will make it just oh so good. We're going to remove the beef from the uh, pan right now. We're going to let it rest for about five minutes. While that's resting, we're going to pull another batch of onions out of there, out of that oil. I have the oil set for a temperature of roughly about 375 degrees. You can do three to 400 degrees. Um, once they come out of that oil, they're going to be extremely hot, but this is the time that you want to salt them or season them however you would like. I'm going to put a little salt on there. 
They're going to crisp up as they sit and they wait. And then I'm going to drop another batch in there. Also, the bread that I put under the broiler for our sandwiches is done. Looks beautiful, nice and crispy. It's going to be delicious. We'll come back in a little bit and we'll finish these sandwiches up for it. Let's plate up. I'm going to grab our salad as well as our aioli from the fridge. I think through preparation and everything, I think we're right at about a half an hour of doing everything. Tomato salad with goat cheese uh, is just, well, it's smelling great, so I'm, I can't even wait. So we'll get this on the plate first. I'll put that right in the middle, sprinkle a little bit more of that chopped parsley on top, give it a great color there on the plate. The sandwiches, because of the aioli, and it's going to be very cold, so it might even have thickened up a little bit more on you. That's quite natural. What I want to do is get a good heaping, maybe two tablespoons of it, smear it on both sides of that bread. While that bread is still warm, And knowing my son, I know he will not want this on a sandwich. So I'm going to do one without it. And I'm going to build the other two for my wife and I. Find which one's top, which one's bottom. We'll go ahead and put our arugula on the top side for the sandwich. And all this is, all this is really missing now is a nice bottle of red wine and I think we're going to have a good dinner. Take our caramelized onions, nice good heaping about. And remember those hanging steaks I talked so much about? Now it's time to slice those and also make sure that we cut them across the grain. Now, currently our grain is running in this direction, so I naturally want to cut it in this direction. Now, not only am I going to cut it across the grain, but I'm also going to cut it on a bias. So again, that's at an angle, and just, I can feel these are like perfect medium rare. To show you how beautiful these look, I'm just going to leave them open faced for you, but there you go. Beautiful hanging tender, crispy onions, the arugula, the aioli, and that wonderful heirloom goat cheese salad. Go get yourself a good bottle of red wine and enjoy. Thanks for watching Cooking from the Cave. I'm Chef Pete Truziak. I'll see you real soon.